Hello, um, I'm Divina Fromex. I'm a professor at Sorbonne Nouvelle and a specialist uh, in media and information literacy, uh, a field that I have plowed for now about 40 years. The field of media literacy is thriving at the moment, uh, partly because we've had uh, several democratic uh, crises. Uh, and so it is being promoted mostly via uh, the information disorders that are hate speech, um, uh, fake news, uh, um, uh, cyber uh, harassment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so one of my concerns is that um, the holistic vision we have in media literacy, which also takes um, into account the opportunities and the creativity uh, that is involved in such um, learning by doing pedagogies, um, is going to be lost. Um, my other concern is that uh, at least in Europe. Now we have a directive, uh, the directive of um, audiovisual media services that makes it uh, an obligation for member states. But this directive also includes uh, the role of the platforms. The platforms are supposed to do media literacy and to promote it. And I fear that uh, these platforms that have been part of the problem of the information disorders uh, are not maybe the best actors um, and the most innocent actors to get involved in uh, media and information literacy. The landscape of media literacy has changed a lot because of COVID. Uh, so, for instance, the uh, European Union has created EDMO, which is uh, an observatory for digital media that is mostly about disinformation and fact-checking. It has created at the DG EAC um, a new expert group in which I am uh, to fight this information and, and promote um, digital literacy. So um, there's lots of opportunities for media and information literacy to uh, be showcased as one of the solutions, creating an awareness uh, at the school level, at the team of uh, the leaders in the school is key because after that, uh, they can uh, prepare their own strategies and uh, pre-bunk all of this and be, be ready in anticipation. Uh, they can, for instance, um, have uh, young uh, people who are ambassadors and who can um, signal when there is um, uh, problems among uh, peers. There's some examples of that kind. They can train uh, some specific uh, teachers to um, do it with other colleagues. They can bring outside uh, help, outside experts, journalists, uh, um, animators and mediators from uh, uh, the police, from uh, other uh, sectors of um, activity. It is often put, at least in France, under the heading of um, um, well-being and um, sort of good uh, school climate. Uh, because, of course, what's happening online has consequences offline and um, conversely. I'm very hopeful for, for the future of media and information literacy. Uh, we have um, the whole range of uh, uh, echelons that are now activated. Of course, we now have to make sure this is implemented. Uh, and what I'm going to fight for is... Uh, uh, two things. One is what I call mil comps, which is to say uh, uh, getting to have a framework of competences for media and information literacy that can be attached to the ditch comp, uh, the, the framework that we have now for digital competences, and we're working uh, on that. The other uh, first is to make sure that media literacy becomes part of a part of a basic core curriculum from K1 to K12, uh, because it cannot be used just from time to time as an adjustment variable uh, when you have a minute or when you have an hour, a spare hour. It's been transversal and it should remain so, but we deserve to have uh, it also as one of the uh, core subjects. Mm -hmm.